into your life, then you're always sailing on the higher note. Praise God. Because that's what God does and that's what he desires to do for us and for his children. And so I'm so excited to what the Lord is doing. And I'm so glad because, you know, God never fails. As Arlene mentioned, in this week only, last week, three new jobs have been given. One last month, two new this week. Praise God. Right? One last month, two this week. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now another testimony from Brother Anil. Isn't that amazing? Come on, give the Lord a loud clap offering. I am so delighted. The season of Pentecost is a season of divine blessings and divine appointments in the house of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I greet you again in the name of Jesus. I'm so delighted. My heart overwhelms with joy when I see the people blessed. Amen. When you thrive, you flourish, you prosper, I get excited in my spirit. And let me tell you, your Abba Father in heaven is, is dancing and rejoicing over you, delighting over you because he cares about you and he wants to honor you and bless you more than abundantly that you can ever think or imagine. And that's what God desires to do for you, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for being in the house of God. Welcome to Amazing Grace Church and Ministries. And let me tell you that Jesus loves you the most in this house. He cares about you. And he died for you on the cross and he paid the price for your sin. And he wants to bless you more than what you have ever thought or ever imagined. Amen. Thank you for praying for us. We are back. And, um, and thank you for seeing so many old faces that I missed seeing in the past week. And a couple of weeks, God bless you. We love you guys. We, uh, you are very precious to God and to us. And we love you dearly. Amen. Praise the Lord. So... Well, God is doing good work. God is uh, changing us, transforming us. And uh, he is preparing a bride for his coming. Amen. Are you ready with me? Yeah. Preparing a bride. The Bible says when Jesus will come, two will be grinding, one will be taken. Two will be at work, one will be taken. Two will be sleeping on a bed, one will be taken away. So the ratio is only 50%. Are you and I in that 50%? Come on. <laughs> You know, and it becomes very, very dicey when I put that question through because a lot of times people who are sure about it will shout about it. Amen. <laughs> but people, those who are not sure about it, they'll probably look here, there, everywhere, and I can get to know where are you. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are there, say shout out, hallelujah. I'll be with Jesus when Jesus comes again because I know that my name is written in the book of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this is the season of Pentecost and uh, today we celebrate the Sunday Pentecost and this is 50 days after the Passover. Now, if you see the spring feast that is, starts with Passover where Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary, he was buried and then he was raised up, right, on the third day. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus also ascended, so there is an ascension day. Jesus also seated on the right hand of God the Father. And a lot of time we forget to celebrate the ascension day of the Lord. Imagine if Jesus was only resurrected and still on the ground, what would have happened? There wouldn't have been a ministry of intercession in heaven for you and for me. Today there is a ministry of intercession in heaven because Jesus not only rose up from the grave, but he also ascended into heaven and where he is now, he's seated at the right hand of God the Father, doing what? Praying for you. Praying for me. Hallelujah. And I like the ministry of Jesus Christ. Even right now, the ministry of intercession. Every miracle that you're hearing, every breakthrough that you are experiencing, every healing that you experience, uh, and every blessing that you experience in your life, it is because of Jesus' ministry. Unending ministry. On the right hand of God the Father, doing what? Praying for you and me. So you're well connected. You're well represented in heaven. And you have been prayed over for in accordance to his word. And we thank God for that. Amen. So we thank God for Pentecost. You know why? Because of the spring festivals. Passover is the first end of the book. And Pentecost is the last end of the book. And all the prophecies of the old concerning Passover and concerning Pentecost was fulfilled during the season and has come to pass. 
Praise God. There are fall festivals like Tabernacle, Teruah, that is the Feast of the Trumpets, the Feast of the Ingathering, the Feast of the Tabernacles will take place when the coming of the Lord is going to take place and we the bride will be ready to go up into heaven to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. I get excited when you talk about rapture. I get excited when you talk about the millennium. I get excited when you talk about the book of Revelation. I get excited when you talk about tribulation. I get excited when you talk about persecution. You know why? Because these things are happening right now, right here, whilst we are breathing this fresh air. Are you with me? People are afraid of persecution and tribulation. But 2,000 years past, the church of Jesus Christ has gone through major persecutions in life. Hallelujah. There had been the blood of the martyrs that has been spent for you and for me. And today it cries out unto God the Father saying, Lord, when are you going to avenge our, what? The blood of the martyrs. When, O oh Lord? And what the Lord says, hold on a bit. There are more brothers who will be martyred for, your, for my name's sake. Come on. Jesus said that. And people talk about, you know what? We will go up into heaven. You know, no worries. It's only for the Jews to suffer. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. God is a God of the Jews and a God is a God of the Gentile church. And the Gentile church should not take uh, pride in saying, I will be taken away and I'll get a special treatment. I'm sorry to say, sir, no. You will not because, you know, Jews and Gentiles are alike in the presence of God. Are you with me? Jews and Gentiles are alike. And let me tell you, on the day of Pentecost, when on the upper room 120 were seated, and there were Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1, if you can go to the book of Acts chapter 1, and a few scriptures, you know what it says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. You know, there are the commands of Jesus that we must pay heed to. And it says, but wait for the promise of the Father. Say promise of the Father. Hallelujah. You know, when my son says, Dad, I need this. And I promise him, not now, later. You get me this much marks on the final, then I'll think about it, you know. And you qualify it. And, and, and you know, this is the, my negotiation and bargaining with my sons. But if I promise to my sons something to give them, I keep my promise. If an earthly father knows how to keep his promise, don't you think your heavenly father knows how to keep his promise for you and me? Hallelujah. And I get excited, you know why? Because the promises of God are never ending. And the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. It will always come to pass for you and for me. And therefore we stand on the promises of the word of God. Today I was talking to my dear brother Manova and I said, the word of God is the seed of God and the more the pressure you will put on the seed, the more the oil will come out. The oil of the Holy Ghost. If you're looking for the oil of the Holy Ghost, put pressure on the word of God. Come on, your word says so. Your word says so. Lord, your promise says so. Lord, your covenant says so. Lord, I pray. Lord, I know that your will is for our bodies to be healed and so we will be healed in Jesus' name. We put pressure on the word of God. We put pressure on the promises of God. When, oh Lord, when we will see a breakthrough. When we will see a deliverance. When we will see our addictions gone away. When we will see our children come in fellowship. When we will see, oh Lord God Almighty, the souls coming. When, oh Lord God Almighty, we will see the power of the Holy Ghost come upon our lives. And it's time is over that you'll say when. It's say, Lord, now is the time that you will baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Now is the time that my sons and my daughters will prophesy because you have promised it alike. These signs will follow them, those who believe. The Bible says in the book of Joel chapter 228, right? That in the end time days, I will pour my Holy Spirit upon you, upon your sons, upon your daughters, upon your even servants in your household. They will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today and now is a day that you and your children must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't wait. Don't wait. It is the season of Pentecost. Every day is the season of Pentecost. But let me tell you, these are the high and the appointed days that you will say, Lord, Lord, I put pressure on the promise and I put pressure on the appointment and I put pressure on the anointment and I ask you to baptize me afresh in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. 
Come on, too much you have taken, thrown down by the devil. Too much you have given into gossip. Too much you have given into slander. Too much you have given into humiliation. Too much you have given into the attacks of Satan. Our time has come. You'll say no and step back, Satan, in Jesus' name. For there is power in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is the day that you will be delivered and you must be blessed. So the Bible says, but wait for the promise of the Father. These are the Jesus' words after resurrection, before his ascension. That's what Jesus is saying. You know, when you go to a, before any elderly parent who's passing away, we go to the deathbed and we say, Papa, what do you want to say? Daddy, what do you want to say? And you are want to record the last words of the Papa. Yes, the last words of the Papa Jesus was on the cross of Calvary. And we talk about the seven things of the Lord God Almighty on the cross of Calvary. That was at the Passover. But now the Passover is over. And now is the time of the Pentecost. Where a new history and a new book and a new word is being written. In the hearts and the minds of the people of God. Because God is doing a great work by the power of His Spirit. In Jesus name. And what Jesus said, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hallelujah. These are the words of Jesus before ascension. My dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus has said so, I believe it. When Jesus said you have given you the power and the authority to trample over Satan, over snakes and over scorpions, I have the authority and I have the power. Amen. And so you do so in Jesus name because the Bible says that these signs will follow them, those who believe. If you're a believer, shout out hallelujah. hallelujah. Because today I'm not going to pray for you. You are going to pray for yourself and one another. And the power of God is going to manifest in your midst in Jesus name. Further down Jesus says in verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive what? Dunamis power. A dynamite power. An explosive power. And creative power. A working creative miracle working power. I will give unto you. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Hallelujah. It's not for one Pastor Samuel. It is not for one miracle worker. It is not for one apostle or the apostles of Christ alone. It is for every brother and every sister and every member in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I say in Amazing Grace Church, every member is a minister. Come on, tell your neighbor you're a minister. You've got healing in your hands. You've got the power of the Holy Ghost inside of you. And come on now, time is that you will tap into the power of the Holy Ghost and say, God, I want to see that miracle happen in the name of Jesus. Because the miracle is in your hands and the miracle is in your mouth. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus is saying, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be what? Come on, you shall be what? Witnesses, come on, shout out witnesses. Unto me, not of your own name, not putting your ministry, your name in everywhere. No, 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 no. It is the name of Yeshua. We sang that beautiful song that in the name of Jesus I speak deliverance and every stronghold will be broken and every curse will be destroyed in the name of Jesus and every power of the devil will melt away in the name of Jesus. Let me give you a testimony. As many of you know that my sister has been diagnosed with brain tumor. And it is in the stem of her, t of, of her brain. And it is in such a critical place that the doctors cannot operate. Alright? So I told my sister, she was in Chennai, she was in down south, now she's in Ames in New Delhi. Her son has come down from the US to be with her. I've got only one sister. She's three years older to me. And I said, she was very down and out. I said, look, we have see, seen miracles after miracles in Tresla family. I'm a walking, talking miracle. You are a walking, talking miracle. There's a miracle in my father's life. There was a miracle in my mother's life. We are a family of miracles. And we have experienced miracles all along. And we will again experience the miracle once again in Jesus' name. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So she was down in Chennai and she was in the hospital and they did an MRI and they did all that and they found a big tumor in the stem and because of the tumor she's getting paralyzed on the left hand side. Her hands are numb and her legs are numb and there is an imbalance of her walk and she is now dependent whereas she used to take care of everybody in my house. Very smilingly she'll serve you, she'll feed you like crazy and make sure that you are so full that you'll go on to sleep on the next bed and the next room. That's how we are there. But let me tell you now she's dependent. Now she wants to get up and do and she, she sometimes fall down to the ground because all of a sudden there is an imbalance. But I said, hey, that's not my sister. Come on. And I told her, I curse the tumor in the name of Jesus. And I command the tumor die at its root in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. She came to All India Institute of Medical Sciences. They did another. They went to Artemis Hospital in Gurgaon. And they did another, another scan in a Tesla machine. Of a 3D machine, whatever machine is there. They did another MRI. They found that the tumor has reduced by 0.8 millimeter. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you, the doctors will say, you know, that's this machine and that machine and that shadow can show and that reduction can, but I know and I know and I know when I curse the tumor, the tumor must reduce and die to its root in Jesus' name. There is no demonic tumors that can stay in my sister's brain in Jesus' name. And I would agree, uh, and I would urge you, agree with me together in prayer that we'll see that tumor dead in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll shout it out from the rooftops. Amen. Just in 21 days time, we started praying, we speaking, curse the tumor in Jesus name. We kill the tumor in Jesus name. I prayed with her. Everyone is praying with her. And let me tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, the miracle is in your mouth. And we are in the season of Pentecost. The fire of the Holy Ghost must do those miracles in your life. If you are grappling with tumors and sickness and diseases, it must fall off in Jesus' name. Depart from your life in Jesus' name. Because we have the power. Satan does not have the power. We have the power. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. The Bible says you will receive dynamite power, dunamis power. And then he says, you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 that they were praying in one accord. And in Acts chapter 2, they were seated in one accord. They were not praying. Prayer created an atmosphere and a platform for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. That's why prayer is critical and prayer is important and a participation in prayer is of paramount importance for every believer. Are you with me? Never undermine the power of prayer and never undermine the power of coming together in corporate prayer and fasting together as a body of Christ. Let me tell you there are miracles in the happening because God does mighty miracles in Jesus name. He does it. You speak the word and he stands behind to make that word happen in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then in Acts chapter 2 we find the manifestation because the Bible says and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place. Prayer has stopped. Prayer created the power of unity. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are sitting in a seat of divorce with your marriage, start praying with your partner in Jesus' name. If your family is not functional and you are divided in your family, start praying in your family. God is going to come through and bring that unity in Jesus' name. And the power of God is going to fall upon you in the mighty name of the Lord. So prayer created unity on the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were all with one accord in one place. That's why a gathering together of the saints is of paramount importance. You cannot discount the coming together of a church. You cannot be sleeping and you cannot be tired and you cannot be having a headache for you to stay back at home because you cannot afford to stay back at home because you only gather once a week and it is imperative that you be in the house of God. Because you never know when you will experience a miracle. You never know when God is going to meet with you. You never know when the heavens will be open. You never know when the power of God will come upon you. And touch you at the point of your very need. In Jesus name. You never know. 
These were the fortunate Jews who sat because they obeyed. You must wait in that place. You must wait when the Holy Ghost has come. And they were diligent in waiting. Are you diligent in waiting for your breakthrough? Are you diligent in waiting for what God can do through you? Are you diligent in seeking God's face the way you could have never thought of doing so before? And if not, then today is the day that you will harness the potential of diligence in your life. And suddenly, say suddenly. suddenly. Come on, say suddenly. suddenly. Tell your neighbor suddenly. Suddenly a miracle is about to happen. Suddenly. And I like that suddenly is of the Lord. And suddenly. That's what happens when you come together with unity in the house of God. Suddenly. Suddenly the power of God will come. Suddenly, there'll be a shaking. Suddenly, there'll be an earthquake. Suddenly, cancer will depart. Suddenly, your status will change. Suddenly, a job will be given. Suddenly, 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 depression will go. Suddenly, tumors will melt away. Suddenly, the power of God will come upon you and you will not be the same. I like the suddenlies of the Lord. And that happens during the season of Pentecost. Hallelujah. You are in the right place at the right time to experience the sudden leaves of God to come upon you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, and, the, and, and what happened? Uh, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Amen. Hallelujah. They didn't do anything. God did everything for them. And I like that when God does his things, he is going to do a perfect work in your and my life. Amen. So the question is, what is the purpose of Pentecost? Is a question that you must ask. The primary purpose of Pentecost is twofold. Remember on the day of Pentecost on the Mount Sinai what happened when God took Moses up into his bosom and he started to talk to him when the, there was fire and thick cloud and darkness over all over the mountain and the mountain was quaking and earthquake was there and there was loud thundering and sounds. He was shut up with God for 40 days and 40 nights. And on that day what was given? The Torah was given. The Ten Commandments was given. On the day of Pentecost, what the Spirit of God does is He takes you back into the Torah. Because on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came upon the 120 Jews, for the next 7 to 8 days, these were the Jews who were on fire for God first. There was not even a single Gentile. Are you with me? Only when Peter stood up and preached the gospel, 8,000 people, 3,000 people got saved the first time. The second preaching, 5,000 people got saved. There was a mighty explosion of souls that took place and came into the house of God. Are you with me? So what happened? There was, we must understand that God through his divine intervention, he wanted Israel to have the Torah to be led by and have a direction and now map with them written word of God the written Torah of God through the Moses that the people of Israel will walk in the ways of Jehovah. So there are twofold purposes of Pentecost number one is to empower us to be bold to witness for Jesus. Amen. And mind you the word witness is coming from the Greek word martus, from where our English word comes martyr. So in your Bible, you can write there, you know, in Hindi you say gava. Right? Gava. In Hindi. Right? In English we say witness. It's not an ordinary witness. The witness in Greek means to be a martyr for Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must change your perspective concerning your being the disciple of Jesus. That tomorrow if the sword hangs before you, are you willing to die for Jesus? Or are you going to deny Jesus and run away? Is a question we must ask. I have to ask several times, Lord, if that persecution hits me, am I ready or will I deny Jesus? And let me tell you, in your comfortable situation and surroundings, you are saying, yes, Lord, I will do that. But when it happens, it becomes a very challenging moment. That's the question that we must ask ourselves every day. Am I willing to die for Jesus? 
Am I willing to be a true martyr for Jesus? That means loving Christ more than myself. Loving Christ more than my family. Loving Christ more than my wife. Loving Christ more than my church. Loving Christ more than anybody else. And loving what God wants me to love. Him and his body of Christ. So he empowers us to be what? To be ready to die for Jesus. To deny yourself. At the cross is comfort. After the cross is commitment. Amen. Right. Tell your neighbor. At the cross is comfort. But after the cross is commitment. And that commitment is calling for your blood. Are you ready for it? Now that's very very militant sounding. But that's what it means. If you see in the real meaning of the word of God. It's calling for your blood. Are you willing to serve God with your blood and with your sweat and with your power and with your money and with your energy and with your marriage and with your family and with your finances? Are you going to serve God? Or are you only going to serve God when everything is hunky-dory? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I love the message of Pastor Preach. You know, he gave us lovely stories of Hollywood. So I was so excited about that Tom Cruise movie. He was flying like a Batman, you see. Or he was doing this, climb the Burj Khalifa. My dear brothers and sisters, God is not interested in your philosophy or my philosophy. In your story or my story. He is interested in his son's story. If we cannot build our messages around his son's story, then we are fooling people and fooling ourselves and we are wasting our time on this planet earth. And I would rather do something else than to preach the gospel of Jesus. Are you with me? If we are called to do something for the Lord, we do it 100% and say, God, whether I live or die, I will live for Jesus. Amen. So we are called to be bold witnesses. So the first primary purpose is God has called you to empower you to be bold witness. And secondly, to enable us to live holy lives in accordance with the word of God. Amen. God doesn't want your theory, your doctrine. No, 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 no. God says follow my word and live and raise up your standard to my living. Hallelujah. He's not saying that I come to you running to your standard. No, sir. He says you raise up your standard. I delivered you, salvaged your life from your sin and your sickness and from your death and from your dreariness. Now is the time that you'll raise up your bar in accordance to my scripture and I will bless you. So what are the 10 specific ministries of the Holy Spirit? Very quickly. Number one, 10 specific ministries of the Holy Spirit. Number one, he educates us with the truths about God and reveals Christ. That's what Jesus does for you. Why was the Holy Spirit given to you? Number one, he, he equips you with the truth about God and he reveals Christ to you. John chapter 16 verse 12 to 15 talks about that. And he says, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Hallelujah. Show you things to come. He'll show you your future. Don't run after a prophet who makes profit out of you. Run after the Lord God Almighty and the Holy Spirit who will tell you what's going to happen tomorrow in your life. Amen. Amen? Because that's what God is going to do for you. He will show you the things to come and he shall glorify me and for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Number two, he convicts us of wrongdoing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Even before your pastor can correct you, even before your mother can correct you, even before your daddy can correct you, he corrects you. If you're alive to the Holy Spirit, your conscience will be so troubled. If you have goofed up and messed up with God, he will point on you. He'll be heavy on you so that you'll repent and get back with God yourself. Are you with me? That's what he does. The Bible says in the book of John 16, 8 to 11, that when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. Thirdly, he regenerates and renews us. Hallelujah. That's why the Holy Spirit has been given to you. To do what? Regenerate and renew you. 
Titus 3 5 says not by the works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So on the day of Pentecost when God poured his Holy Spirit these were the purposes that by he did that. Number four he baptizes or places us into the body of Christ. Very very important. Hallelujah. You will be flowering, you'll be growing where you are planted, where you are prospering in the Lord God Almighty. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is that he wants you to make you pure and holy and then he places you in the local body of Christ. Remember one thing, there's a false doctrine that goes on. Hey, you know, you're in the global church, you can go anywhere, it doesn't matter. We love all the brethren, we love Jesus. That's a very cheap talk. It is not a godly talk. The day you were born again, yes, you are part of the global church. But that global church will happen under the leadership of Jesus. Not now. Hallelujah. <laughs> are you with me? That global church will happen on the leadership of Jesus when he will be the shepherd of his people for 1,000 years on this planet earth. You will be led by the chief Messiah, the shepherd of your soul, the Lord Jesus Christ. But roll through the New Testament. The gospel was written to the local body of Christ and the local churches. Amen. That is why it is important that you are part and parcel of the local body of Christ. And that, that's what the spirit of God does. He baptizes you or he places you into the body of Christ. Local body of Christ where you will call yourself that you are planted in the house of God. And you are fruitful in the house of God. Amen. For by one spirit. We are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number six. Sorry, number five. He gives assurance of our salvation. Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit itself, beareth witness with our human spirit that we are the children of God. Hallelujah. What are we? We are the children of God. Tell your neighbor, you are the child of God. Come on. It is the spirit of God that must give you assurance. Because today you are in the congregation. Tomorrow you will be alone. You must be reminded of your identity. And that identity reminder is given not nobody by nobody else. But by the Holy Spirit. When you are communing with the Holy Spirit. When you are saying. Roho lo mo manda me. Si alamandoro. Praying in the tongues. And the Spirit of God assures you. Samuel you are my son. I will take care of you. I will provide for you. I will protect you. I will preserve you. I will prosper you. I will load you with benefits. My promises are yes and true. And amen for you. Amen. Who does that? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. My dear brothers and sisters, tap into the reservoir of the spirit that is inside of you. Tap into that pray in tongues and spirit of God. Invigorate me, rejuvenate me, refresh me, revive me and restore unto me everything that the devil has stolen from my life in the name of Jesus. And I want to chase the devil out in Jesus name. Let me tell you my experience with the Holy Spirit is a very difficult one. It's not a hunky dory ride with the Holy Spirit. Because he points me, Samuel, here you have gone wrong, there you have gone wrong, that's how you should be, that's how you should, your attitude was not right, you were brash, whatever. All the time the Holy Ghost is after my soul, that I will order my steps the way God wants me to be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's not an easy ride with the Holy Ghost. And that's why people don't like the Holy Ghost. Because they don't want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because if you are led by the Holy Spirit, then you will be conformed into the image of his son Jesus. Hallelujah, that's what the Lord wants. For you and me, he's coming for a perfect church. He's coming for a church that has been transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. He's not coming for a church. Remember, I told you two were grinding, one was taken, two were working, one was taken, two were sleeping, one was taken. 50% ratio that will go into heaven. Are you and me in that 50% ratio? Gives assurance. Who gives you the assurance? Your pastor is not there to tell you, brother, you know, Jesus loves you. And you know, he lives inside of you. Today be encouraged. Don't be depressed, brother. Hallelujah. You need to encourage yourself. Are you with me? Your spirit of God will encourage you. Assure you in your spirit that you are the child of God. Number six, he indwells and guides our lives. 
Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. In 1 Corinthians 6 19 to 20 says what know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Your body is the temple of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Therefore you cannot cuss words. You cannot use the cuss words. You cannot curse anybody. You cannot uh, you know use any intoxicating things in your body because your body is holy. You cannot be addicted to the things of the world. And if you are addicted, then today is the day of the deliverance in Jesus' name. If you have been struggling with any addiction tonight, today is the day of your deliverance in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says you are not your own for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Amen. Seventhly, he prays for us. What he does? Holy Spirit prays for us. The Bible says in 826, Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. That is our weaknesses. We know not what we should pray. For as we ought that the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. If you don't know what to pray, if you're down and out, just open your mouth and start speaking in tongues in Jesus name. He knows the perfect prayer. It doesn't matter that sound, the tongue language sounds very familiar to you. It does not matter. You just pray. You know what is you're doing? You're praying mysteries unto God in heaven. And that's what the Spirit of God does. He prays the perfect will of God through our lives and for our lives. Hallelujah. Number eight, he fills our lives with joy and power. Right? Therefore, Ephesians chapter 5, 18 says, And be not be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why did the Holy Spirit is compared to the wine? Because if you take too much of wine, you get intoxicated. You get influenced by the wine. Instead of driving to Sharjah, you start driving to, you know, Dubai land. You know, and something happens. You know, the direction changes. That's what happens when you're drunk of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that today you'll be drunk of the Holy Spirit instead of getting lured up with the things of the world because then you'll be in proper senses. You will have no hangovers. When you're drunk of the Holy Spirit, you'll have no headaches the next day because the power of the Holy Ghost has the power to heal and the power to lead you correctly in the paths of righteousness and truth and holiness and besides still waters and green pastures amen. Amen. amen number eight sorry eight is done nine he seals and guarantees our eternal promise Ephesians 4 30 says and grieve not the Holy Spirit how do we grieve the Holy Spirit whereby he are sealed unto the day of redemption if you see in the same chapter let no uncouth word come from your mouth <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nothing evil should come from your mouth. Shut it if you want to say something wrong about somebody. If wrong and foul language is coming from your mouth, you need deliverance in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Somebody was telling me, you know, the pastor runs uh, some business somewhere. And they were saying, Pastor, you know, the church is doing great, great, great. But I was working with the pastor and, you know, he was using F and B words. I said, Wow. The pastor using FMB words. It's not food and beverage. You understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Praise the Lord. That pastor needs deliverance. That brother needs deliverance. You and I need deliverance. If we are used to using those food and beverage words, then we need deliverance in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. It's very important that we understand. He seals and guarantees our eternal promise. The Bible says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's why you must weigh every word that you speak, because by that you will be judged on the day of judgment. Because either in, on this earth, you may be grieving the Spirit, or you must be bringing delight to the Holy Spirit who is living inside you. Tenth and the last thing, and then we'll pray. He distributes gifts to the church. I like that. That is why number one, he baptizes you and places you in the local body of Christ. And he does what? Distributes gifts. Distributes gifts. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible talks about in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 to 11. You can go home and read it. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible very clearly says that all these things happen but by the same Spirit. The Bible says in verse 5, there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one, then he talks about. Hallelujah. 
So the administration, the operation, and every working of the Spirit has been done by the same Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so it says in the last verse, in verse 11, But all these work it, that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And therefore it is very, very important to be placed into the body of Christ. To be planted into the body of Christ. To be growing into the body of Christ. Because Jesus loves you. More than your pastor. He's interested. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. So either you are partner with Jesus or you are partner with the devil. Either you are building the church or you are breaking the church. You cannot have some, you know, in between. Are you with me? You will build your church with your actions, with your prayers, with your words, with everything that you do. You are building the church or you are breaking the church. You are not in either two camps. You can't be in two camps because ultimately you will drown. My dear brothers and sisters, that's why the Bible calls you. I have placed you in the body of Christ that you will build the, my church. Amazing Grace Church is not Pastor Sam's church. It is his church. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the chief shepherd. He's the shepherd of your soul. He watches over you night and day. I don't. I just pray and go to sleep. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I commit you into God's hands. The rest God takes care of you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just pray that Lord you'll bless this guy with a job because he's not having a job. And God blesses you and I give a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Testify from this pulpit that God has done for you. But let me tell you round the clock. Jesus is the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the bishop and the shepherd of my soul. And if the Lord has planted me an amazing grace church, I will build this church for the glory of the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I will do what the Lord has called me to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I, as I mentioned last week, you know, we were coming out from Colorado and I was sitting with this uh, elderly grandmother of 84 years who is friends to Judah and Benjamin and their family and we had a last dinner with them and said bye to them and I just laid my hands on her back and prayed for her. She has got scoliosis that is she's got at the tail end her spine goes S shape and comes there. The whole spine. Alright. And the four vertebral columns of her is fused. So I just laid my hand. She was sitting on the, at the big round table and we were sitting on my I just laid my hands on her back shoulder. And I said, Lord, you'll heal this grandmama in the name of Jesus. Your power will flow. And Lord, that she will not have any difficulty. And let me tell you, I never knew of any what kind of difficulty she had. Because, you know, she's very agile at 84. She go, does three miles of cycling, five miles of cycling. She drives her own car. She cooks her own food. She took us everywhere to Red Rock Amphitheater to enjoy the beautiful views of Colorado. I was surprised that at 84, that lady was up and about and doing great things. Praise the Lord. And then she had weights kept next to her. She was doing weights while sitting. You know, and she'll have a box of almonds. She'll eat almonds every day. Praise the Lord. At 84, she's got the zest to live. Now tell me how many of you have got the zest to live next day. <laughs> Hallelujah. At 84, she's got the, you know, the zest and the zeal to live long. And to live strong. And she said, man, I don't want to be dependent on anybody. And she lives all alone in that house. My dear brothers and sisters, I just laid my hands and prayed. Next day in the morning, she said, first thing she told me, Samuel, after a long many years, I've got up with zero pain in my body. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then I thought, okay, maybe, you know, it's an euphemism that, you know, she just experienced some goosebumps of the Holy Spirit. Okay, then I told Judah, check with her next year. She said, next day, she's healed. She, she used to take two hours to get up from a bed. And she never mentioned anything that to us. No one of us knew. Did you know that, Judah and Ben? No. We never knew that she used to take, she was in severe pain. She never complained of a pain ever. She was cheerful. She was joyful. And I was so surprised. In fact, I got ministered by her demeanor. At that age, she ministered to me how to be joyful, how to be hopeful, how to have zeal and passion for the next day and the next year. And she just lost husband four years ago. And, and let me tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, I believe God has healed. Even today, she gets up with zero pain early in the morning. Praise the Lord. When God heals, he does a complete job. Amen. It was, it was not a Holy Ghost prayer, let me tell you. It was a simple prayer. 
what i mean to say is i was yelling screaming casting out some demon commanding the spine to go back in straight order no 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 it was just a simple prayer that same power god has given to you and to me you start laying hands on the sick they will get healed they will get delivered you will see mighty miracles and power flowing through you in jesus name hallelujah rise up on your feet right now and turn your face to your neighbor and start praying for the neighbor for next 10 minutes because we have to we have to we have to end the meeting as fast as possible i don't have time to lay hands on you on everybody but you must pray for your neighbor not for your family for your neighbor in jesus name not neighbor who's sitting next to you who's not your family you'll pray for that person find that person who's not your family and start praying because the power of the holy ghost is in you these signs will follow them those who believe in jesus name they will be healed in the mighty name of the lord god almighty pray for one another right now right here in jesus name come on right now come on everybody 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 no matter what your problem is no matter what your pain is no matter what your challenge is no matter what your trouble is no matter what you're facing today is the day of your salvation and today is the day of your healing and today is the day of your deliverance and today is the day of your breakthrough and today is the day of pentecost and today is the day that you will be filled with the holy ghost in jesus name rabala mashika namanda rala mase come on everywhere 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 shebere le messi kolomonde yana masa come on hallelujah rahana mada power is in your hands and the power is in your mouth in jesus name the miracle working power is in your hands in jesus name ribana masa karalama dalama shokorolomosi ana mandere keneme siala mandara korolomoshe receive 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 your healing receive your miracle receive your deliverance receive your pentecost receive your anointing receive the fresh baptism of the holy spirit receive receive your financial breakthrough receive your job breakthrough receive your marital breakthrough receive your emotional breakthrough receive your future breakthrough in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name robolomo shikana manda yenemese rahala masa kala mando roko lahala mashi ala manda rakala mase Father I thank you I thank you I thank you I thank you receive your healing receive your healing receive restoration God is a God of restoration everything that the canker of them the palm of them has eaten and stolen from you the Lord God almighty will restore it back to you in a double measure in the name of Jesus come on in the name of Jesus hallelujah from Genesis to Revelation the holy bible is the bible of restoration restoration everyone who watches me like you are being restored you are being healed you are being delivered you are being set free even in this day of pentecost you will receive the fresh baptism of the holy spirit right now right here in jesus name right now right here in jesus name the power of god rests upon you the power of god flows upon you in the name of jesus hallelujah father we thank you we praise you for delivering your people we praise you for delivering your people we praise you for healing your people we praise you for blessing your people we praise you and i speak shalom shalom over your people peace that passeth all understanding will be the portion of your people of god shere le messia namanda ra kala masa namando ro kura ma shere le mende yene messe hallelujah 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 thank you jesus 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 we love you we love you we praise you we thank you jesus thank you for touching your people thank you for healing your people oh god thank you for loving them thank you for blessing them thank you for lifting them up for you are the glory and the lifter of their head o god you are the glory and the lifter of their head o god bless them o god this is your heritage but by your blood full by you with your holy spirit this is your heritage o god bless them o father in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and we thank you we thank you we thank you we praise you and we glorify your name 
We praise you and we glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Se barala masho kolomonde. Si kalamandara kana mashe. Baptize your people, O oh Lord. Fresh, fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Fresh baptism of the Spirit of God. Fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, O oh Father. Come through for your people. They love you, Lord. They love you. That's why they are here. They have come expecting great things from you. And I thank you. Every migraine is going away from you. Every spine problem is being healed in the name of Jesus. Every diabetes is running away. Every blood pressure problem is being healed in Jesus' name. Every pandemic situation is getting sorted out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no cancer. There will be named in your body. There will be no tumor. There will be no goiter. There will be no growth. There will be no, 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 no. No issue, issue with your thyroid gland. God is healing your thyroid in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. And we magnify your name. Jesus, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, O oh Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Can you give the Lord a big clap offering wherever you are? Come on. He deserves. He deserves the glory. Every member in this church is a minister. Every member is a minister. And God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as your servant, I speak blessings upon your church. I speak blessings upon everyone who watches us live. I release your anointing, O oh Father. Anointing in this season of Pentecost. Lord, as we celebrate the feast of Pentecost, the power of Pentecost will be the portion of your church in this season in Jesus' name. And I pray that you'll confirm the preaching of the word with signs, with wonders, with miracles. And let Jehovah be alone exalted. Let Jehovah be glorified and be magnified. As your servant, I bless your church with Abrahamic covenantal blessing. As Abraham was rich in faith, in cattle, in gold, and in silver, so shall your people will be. And Lord, that they will be lifted up by you because your word says that you are the glory and the lifter of their head. Bless them. Be with them. Uphold them with your right righteous hand. As they step out and their father start their jobs for tomorrow onwards in their businesses, you will flourish them, prosper them, grant them bonuses, increase in their salaries, increase in their client base, increase in their deals, increase in their revenues, increase in their finances, increase in your anointing upon their lives. That you will be alone glorified because we know that you are the God of increase. In blessings will I bless you. And in multiplying will I multiply you. So shall be that promise for your church, for your people in this season. And you will receive all glory. Lord, I thank you for healing us, delivering us. Thank you for these lovely testimonies that has come forth for the glory of your name. We vow to give you all the glory and praise. And we thank you for that. We give you honor, dominion, power, and authority. Because it all belongs to you and to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of his sweet Holy Ghost be with us now and forevermore. And all the saints of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. Thank you so much for being in the house of God. Be encouraged. And if somebody whom you know has not come today, call them, remind them of Jesus' love.